Hello everyone. Right now our country is experiencing a great period of unrest as voices cry out for justice. Now we may not always understand or agree with all of those voices, but as people of God we do want to know where we fit into all this. Many of us are asking what we can do, how we can support this work for justice and equality that's going on right now. It might feel like there's not a whole lot that we can do in a place like Gig Harbor about some big national problem out there, but there is. As part of our baptismal vocation, we have been called to strive for peace and justice in all the earth. And right now, we have the opportunity to do just that. There are steps that you can take right here and now in your own home to help be a part of this growing movement. The first of those steps is just simply to read. One of the single most important things that we can do as white people is to listen to the stories and experiences of people of color. Racism doesn't exist because of hate or fear. Hate and fear are born out of ignorance. It's white folks like us who don't believe or don't value the stories of people of color that allow for this sin to continue. And so even if we can't be a part of a diverse community where we live or work or go to school, we can still expose ourselves to those stories and experiences through literature. Books and essays, even works of fiction by authors of color help us begin to understand the perspectives of our siblings in Christ in a way that we could never experience ourselves. Below in the video description, there's a link to a list of books that you can read. It's not an exhaustive list by any means. I'm sure there are, you can think of many that could be added to that, uh, but it's a good place to start. I'd like to uh, suggest two books in particular. The first is by Ibram X. Kendi. And it's called How to Be an Anti-Racist. Right now, as we question how we can best support and be allies to our siblings of color, uh, this book offers concrete suggestions for just that. It tells us what to do and what not to do. It, it suggests some of those things that our siblings have asked of us in this time, how we can be helpful. The second book uh, is by an a pastor in the ELCA, uh, written as, a, as an open letter to the ELCA. It's called Dear Church, a love letter from a black preacher to the whitest denomination in America. It's a stark look at our denomination's own role in this issue. It's currently on sale now through Augsburg Fortress if you'd like to order a copy for yourself. Now I'd like to say that reading these stories and experiences will probably make you uncomfortable, and that's okay. It's good for us to remember how uncomfortable life is for people of color in this country because they don't experience it the same way that we do. You may read things in these books that challenge you or uh, that you disagree with. And so I would like to encourage you to please push past that discomfort, to keep reading, to seek to understand what the authors are trying to say. Uh, because it's only by understanding their perspective and honoring that perspective uh, that we can move forward. The next thing that you can do is to speak, to use your voice. Right now there are demonstrations going on all over the place, Tacoma, Gig Harbor, uh, and across the country. These demonstrations and protests are public expression of anger, but they're also an opportunity for us to show solidarity to show up and let people know that they are not alone. If you choose to attend one of these demonstrations, do so with the love of Christ in your heart, love that boldly proclaims repentance for the forgiveness of sins, love that holds accountable but does not hold a grudge. Now, going to demonstrations isn't for everyone, and especially in the midst of a, of a pandemic, uh, going may not be very safe but that doesn't mean that there's not other ways to use your voice. You can still write to your local, state, and federal elected officials. Urge them to support police reform, to make other changes proposed by communities of color. We take our lead from them. In this case, it is our job to use our privilege and our power to amplify their voices, not to use our voices to speak for them. 
demand change, but also thank officials for supporting beneficial changes that have already been made, even or uh, even changes that haven't been made, but that they have supported. Let them know that the angry voices and opposition they are hearing are not the only ones. Let them know that you will hold them accountable when it comes time for elections. If they hear from enough people, it will res affect how they respond to these situations now and in the future. A great tool for this is the ELCA advocacy page. On social media, you can find all sorts of petitions that you can sign about this and that and the other. And more often than not, what happens is that those petitions go nowhere, it just puts your name on a mailing list. But ELCA advocacy will send you email alerts uh, about once a week uh, with concrete actions that you can take to help uh, support um, racial equality or environmental issues or work for change in other areas, hunger and poverty. What I find most helpful is that when there is a specific piece of legislation that we can support, uh, you will be one of these emails will give you a link to a form letter that you can um, review and edit yourself and that will send those directly to your elected officials. You can also get involved with Faith Action Network, which is um, the advocacy office of the ELCA here in Washington, uh, along with several other uh, groups. Uh, we share that ecumenically and in interfaith. Um, you can also get involved with the Washington Poor People's Campaign and Black Lives Matter so that you can hear what issues they are supporting and why. And perhaps the hardest thing to do, but also very important, is to have those hard conversations with people that you know and love, but with whom you disagree. Allow them the space to be heard. Come with a spirit of curiosity. Allow them to tell you what their concerns and their fears are. To find common ground with them. But then also challenge them to hear your fears and your concerns. We might find that for all that divides us, we actually have a lot more in common than we realize. The next step is to act. Get out and vote. Encourage others to vote. Talk about who you're voting for and why. Have those conversations with people, even if you don't disagree, even if you don't agree with them. Uh, allow people to think about why they are voting the way they do. Voting is how we hold our leaders accountable, and we need to be willing to vote for or against someone that we might not otherwise, if it means that it could bring about needed change. The next thing is very similar to that: participate in the census. Uh, and also encourage others to participate in the census. Communities of color are especially in danger of being underrepresented in the census, and that puts them at a risk of having less representation in their government. Volunteer with census drives and campaigns to help make sure that people of color get counted. As part of this, uh, it's important to remember those lives who, that have been lost to racism. There are lists online of the many people just in the last few years who have lost their lives to racism. Um, I encourage you to find those lists, to pay attention to those names, say the names, pray for their families. We can't ever forget that this is not just uh, a social issue. This is an issue that has names and faces associated with it, that there have been lives lost to this preventable deaths that we can stop. As part of this remembrance, I'd like to invite you to attend our Synod service of prayer in commemoration of the murder of the Emmanuel Nine. Five years ago, nine people were murdered in uh, Mother Emmanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina. Two of those people murdered, pastors, were graduates of ELCA seminaries, and the shooter was a member of an ELCA congregation. And so because uh, this particular event showcased that our denomination has a part in this, we uh, set aside June 17th as a day of commemoration uh, for those nine people murdered every year. 
it's kind of like in the Catholic tradition when someone is beatified as a saint. We don't do saints, but we do days of commemoration. Um, and so uh, this Wednesday, June 17th at 7 p.m., there's a Zoom worship service being hosted by our synod. Uh, the link is on our website, and I would encourage you to attend if you can. And finally, another important thing that you can do is to find hope. It's far too easy for us to get discouraged, too easy for us to feel overwhelmed and to uh, ignore how important our part in this work is. Especially those of us who have the privilege to um, not have to worry about this in our daily lives. We can just forget it and go on about our, our day as though nothing were wrong. We can't do that. We can't afford to do that. So find hope wherever you can. Read scripture to remember how God has saved God's people in the past. Pray for healing and reconciliation. Share stories of racial harmony and healing. We can't let ourselves off the hook, but neither can we let ourselves begin to believe that this evil is too strong for us to face. We belong to a God who has promised to save us, who invites us to participate in that salvation. Our God promises that we are headed for the kingdom of God, a time and a place where justice and peace will prevail. It is good for us to remember that God keeps God's promises. As scripture says, the Lord has spoken and will act. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus.